In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to set up navigation using tile maps. Now, often people get confused when setting up navigation, especially when they're using non orthogonal tiles, like the isometric ones you see here, or hex shaped tiles, for example. But whatever tile shape you're using, there are a few simple rules you need to follow to make sure your navigation works well. Now, one thing I won't be covering in this video is the code required to move your character through the map. For that part, I've partnered up with Nathan at GDQuest. I'll link to his video at the end and in the comments below, and you can go there to learn how to use the navigation once you have it set up. To begin, you can download the starter project from the link below. It contains the art assets we'll be using for our tiles. Unzip the file and then import the project in the project manager. Navigation 2D works by using navigation polygons. Here I've drawn a big navigation polygon just by itself. As long as I click inside the polygon, the navigation 2D will be able to find a path to that position. Now when you have a tile map, you're not going to be drawing one big polygon. Instead, you're going to have a polygon assigned to each tile. And then at runtime, the tile map node will combine all of those individual polygons into one large one that covers your whole map. Here's our setup for our navigation scene. I have a navigation 2D node with a tile map as a child of it. The sprite and the line 2D are going to be for the character that moves around. And again, you can go over to Nathan's video to see how the code works to make the movement. Uh, we're going to stick to the tile map for this one. Now to make the tile set that goes in your tile map, you can use the new editor in Godot 3.1, which lets you chop up your image file into the tiles and assign polygons and all that kind of thing. However, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use the old-fashioned create a scene and export it as a tile set, and I'll explain why as we get a little further into this demo. So let's drag our isometric tile out here to create a sprite. And I'm going to make sure to set its position at uh, 0, 0 because I want to be able to keep this thing centered. So here's our isometric tile. And unlike a square tile, you're going to want to make sure that your spacing is correct. For example, if I were to duplicate this and you saw a second tile, when they're in the tile map, we don't want these laid out in a grid and all spaced out. We want them to overlap a certain amount so that the tile behind is covered by the tile in front. Right? And they're going to line up like that or over on this side. And so that means that our polygons are going to be affected by that too. But let's start by getting our tile map working. So I'm going to choose Convert to Tile Set. And I'm going to call this Isometric Tile Set. Dot T R E S. T R E S stands for text resource in Godot. So it's a resource file stored in a text format. Hit save. We go over to our isometric example and we're going to load that into our tile set property of our tile map. I'm just going to hit load here. Isometric tile. So there's my tile. Now, obviously, I can't just start laying them out because my tile map has to be configured properly. So you click on the cell and expand it. And we're going to need to make a couple changes over here. First, we're going to change the mode to isometric. And then for the cell size, I need the size of this top piece of my tile, the, this parallelogram up here, which in the case of my tiles here is 120 wide and 70 tall. And now when I put my tiles out here, they line up as I would expect. So here's a quick map I drew out that'll give us a good test to see that our navigation is working, that it finds a path around, and for example these little islands here in the middle should be unreachable because there's no path to them. So now we need to create our navigation polygons on our tile. And this is really the reason for this entire tutorial, is I very often encounter users on the QA forums or on the Discord who are trying to do navigation in tile maps, especially in non-square tile maps, and can't figure out why their navigation doesn't work. 
and it's because you have to create the polygons in a specific way to make sure that they are processed correctly. So let's go over to our tile here. So this is where we want to make our navigation polygon that covers the top of the tile. So it's going to need to be 120 wide and 70 tall. And so over here on my tile, I'm going to add a navigation polygon instance. And I'm going to just click on the screen and it's going to ask me if I want to create a new polygon for this. And I do. And I'm not going to worry about the points at the moment. I'm just going to draw four of them. So there's a navigation polygon. And I need these to be aligned exactly. And since we've turned on grid snapping, which I've set to one pixel, then each one of these points is I'm going to make sure that they're at whole number pixels as I move them around. And that's going to be really important. And the other thing is I need to get these aligned exactly. Now if this whole height here is 70, how can I tell that I've lined them up right? Well, one thing you can do is use the ruler over here. I'm going to take the, the entire sprite and I'm going to shift it down so that it's centered on the x-axis to make it a little easier to, for us to do the lining up. Now, we want to use the ruler. So one thing you can do is you can zoom in really far and you can pull these things up and put them at exactly 35, right? So that's half of, if you can see over here, Here's 34 and 36. You can even move over like this, put it right next to the ruler if you're concerned about getting it lined up just right. But we want that at 35, which is half of 70. And then down here, we want this one on the x-axis, and then we want it at 60 pixels. And again, right there, lined up at 60. Same on this side. We want this to go over to the 60 line. And finally, oops, clicked away from the polygon, we want this last one to be down at minus 35, which if we zoom over here, you can see I am at 35. Now I know that my polygon is, sh is sized exactly right. And this is really important because when you have two tiles, let's duplicate this for a second just to look at it. When you have two tiles and they're, the tiles are aligned like this, if the two polygons don't align exactly, and by exactly I mean whole number amounts, if you don't have snap on and your pixel is, or your position of your vertex here is at you know negative 35.321, then they're not going to align exactly right. If they don't align exactly right, the tile map will not be able to blend these into one large polygon, and you'll find that you can move around on this tile, but you can't cross over into this tile. When you click over here, you get no movement. So let's convert this to a tile set again. This time it has polygons on it. Make sure you have the merge with existing over here set to off. That way when you save it, it'll, it'll overwrite the tile set you did before instead of trying to merge them together, which can sometimes cause issues when you're changing individual tiles. Uh, we're going to hit save, overwrite. So now if we go over to our isometric example here, everything should be good. Let's hit run and let's see what happens. Here we go. You see it's finding the path around, winding around between. If I click on the little island, there's no path to there, so it doesn't. it's not able to move. And everything is working as expected. Now I'm just going to show you real quick what would happen if you didn't do this right. Like, let's say that this, was, this one was off just even one pixel. All right, so now this polygon is not going to line up with an adjacent one. Now I'm clicking, nothing happens. The only time I move is when I'm in the same clicking in the same tile. So if you have this problem, it could very well be because of your navigation polygons not aligning. Now in Godot 3.1, you can use the tile set editor to edit your tiles. Um, it looks like this. You have the individual tiles and you can um, click on edit here and, and change around their various polygons. 
The problem with this when trying to do precise measurements like we needed to do for the isometric tile is, as you can see, there's no rulers. So while you can turn on uh, grid snapping and configure it to one pixel and all of that, it's really hard to measure it out if you know you exactly need you know, something to be 60 pixels wide or something like that. Because of that, I found it easier for this particular project to use the scene export to tile set method instead of using the new editor. Hopefully over time this editor will improve and give us some more functionality where it makes it easier to do those kinds of precise polygon drawing. So now that we've looked at isometric tiles, let's briefly move over and take a look at hexagon shaped tiles. So here are a couple of hex tiles. One's going to be our clear space and one has an obstacle in it. So we'll add a nav poly to this tile so we can walk through it and we won't add one to this tile so it'll be an obstacle that we can't walk through. First, let's go over and set up the tile map node. So here we have the same exact scene setup as we did for the isometric demo. The only difference is going to be how we configure the tile map. The code will be the same, everything else will be the same. So for the tile map, there isn't a mode for hex, but that's okay. We're going to stick with square and we're going to enable a half offset in the x axis. That's going to make alternating rows offset from each other, sort of in a brick pattern, like a brick wall. Uh, I don't know if you can see this on the video. The orange, the pale orange grid lines don't show up too well, so uh, hopefully you can see that. But you'll see it when we start laying them out. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and load the hex tiles just so we can see what they look like. So obviously this isn't the right layout, right? So we need to set the size. Now the size of these hexes is 120 wide by 140 tall. But if I put that in there, 120 by 140, then we're going to get the horizontal spacing fine, but then the vertical spacing is going to be too far apart. Right? They're too spread out because each individual square doesn't overlap any. So we need this height to be smaller. If you look at the tile, this distance here from the top to this corner right here is 35 pixels. So we would, if we took away 35 pixels, this would shift up that far. So 140 minus 35, we're going to put this to 105. Now you can see they moved up and they meet, but there is some lines that you can see between the tiles. And that's because these tiles have some, you know, if you zoom in, have some aliasing going on here on the edges. So what we can actually do is set this to 104 and actually shift it up one more pixel. And that's going to blend those lines together so that when we run it, this is going to be very hard to see, right? Obviously, when we zoom in, we can see it a little bit, but it looks a little nicer. So now we can you know, draw our tiles. They blend together just fine. We can have our obstacles. You know, We make a big um, area to run around in. Just paint this up and then we'll put some obstacles that we have to kind of avoid and walk around. And when we run it, you'll see this looks nice and smooth. So now we just need to make those navigation polygons. And so this is going to be the same situation as with the isometric tile, which is that we need these points to be aligned with the corners. So we started with this one right here being at zero in the Y axis. And these over here are at 35, just like we counted before. So this line comes down to 35. The width over here is 120. And then I did the same thing here where I moved it up one pixel. So instead of being at 35 up from the bottom, it's 36 up from the bottom so that the height is, will be 104. And that's going to make these, again, align exactly the same way the tiles are aligned and the polygons will be blended together just fine. So if we go over here and run the hex example with that tile set, we get 
the same kind of navigation that we would get in any other kind of tile set. So hopefully this helps you out when you're making your own navigation on your tile sets and prevents you from having any of those frustrating issues of not being able to figure out why things won't move. And as for the code for calculating the path through the navigation tile set, I will direct you over to Nathan's video at GD Quest, and you can see how that's done as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in future videos.